Look at me. What are we driving today? It's a toy Lexus. It's a Lexus, the Lexus ES350 Sports Luxury. To be precise, this thing here. It's a 300H, bro. <laughs> Jacob was just like, it's a, it's a Lexus ES300H. I'm tired, man. We've just been at a, the Ford Ranger launch for two days. That's right, I understand. You, yeah, you understand. I wasn't invited. <laughs> you weren't invited, were you? And actually, that's a really good segue as to the topic of today's video, the Lexus ES. It's in a dying mid-sized luxury market. So why is this thing going up in sales astronomically rather than going down? Today, we're going to explore why it's been so successful. Let's get straight into it. <laughs> Now, as I said, we're driving the sports luxury. That's top of the range. It's going to set you back just over 87 grand drive away. That's one of the things that makes it so successful. It's actually reasonably priced for a luxury anything these days. But yeah, here we have the AS350. <laughs> but yeah, here it is. I mean, it's a pretty decent looking car. I think it's the best looking car in the world. I do like this grill quite a lot. Look, Lexus badge there and it's blue. And that means that it's a hybrid. You've actually got these upgraded lights here on the Sports Luxury. Do like that. They're super duper bright. They've got a really cool daytime running light there too. But otherwise, there's not too much going on. I can't say I'm a big fan of the paint. Jacob, what do you think? Uh, I would have liked it better in silver. Silver. Yeah, this is a bit of a grandpa spec, I think. So coming to the side, this is classed as a mid-sized sedan, but it's five meters long. So it's longer than a Land Cruiser. I wouldn't really call it mid-sized. I'd call it pretty damn big. But you do get these really nice, look, 18 inch alloy wheels here. They're in this like grayed out finish. I think it looks really damn cool. I've also got a camera here for your 360 camera system. Too bad it is one of the worst I have seen in any car, let alone a luxury car. But thankfully that's only, that's pretty much one of the only bad things about it. Here, look, you got keyless entry and go. I like that. You've got chrome absolutely everywhere. It is insane. Hybrid down the bottom. Again, this is the hybrid privacy glass there. And it's really dark too. You cannot see in, even if you don't have the sun shades up on the inside. So yeah, that's pretty damn impressive. So coming to the back and this thing has been recently facelifted and I think this is my favorite angle. I really like the look of it. Got these really cool tail lights here. I like the chrome bar running in the middle. Again, so much chrome, including down the bottom as well. Lexus badge, Lexus ES300. H. I mean, overall, it's a pretty decent looking car. Jacob, what do you think? I think it's really classy. Very classy. I don't think it's the best looking car though, but to each their own. Let's talk about the interior. Okay, so what about the interior? The door slammed with a really nice thud, actually. It's very satisfying. It's very satisfying. The interior is genuinely incredible. It is such a nice place to be. I don't know why, but I'm always shocked every time I get into a Lexus because you touch absolutely everywhere. It just feels so solid. Everything is so nice and soft touch, and it just feels like such a premium luxury place to be. You can see here, we've got all these wood accents. This is actually bamboo. It's new for the facelift, and it's pretty damn cool. It does feel like you're... Make you feel like you're in Japan, Jacob, don't you think? Do you feel like a samurai? I feel like a samurai. I really, really do. Not in body structure, of course, just <laughs> mentality. Just in, uh, yeah, mindset. Maybe I'm not a samurai. But really nice steering wheel. It is, of course, heated. It's just so good to hold on to. And you've got buttons to control absolutely everything and paddle shifters here. Also new for the facelift is this screen here. We've now got a 12.3 inch display. <laughs> They've actually moved it forward because it still has this uh, Lexus touchpad, which it works okay. It takes quite a bit of getting used to and I don't really love it. A lot of people don't love it. And they're getting rid of this in future models, like in the NX we reviewed. And Jacob, should they watch that review? Do it, watch it now. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay on this Open video. another tab. <laughs> and watch it at the same time as this. Do that. <laughs> but yeah, it works super duper well. You can now use it as a touchscreen because that's new functionality. And it's fine. It's okay. It's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both of which are wide. Not that I care very much. And it's a bit of a faff to use. Not the best, but whatever. The new one they have is a lot better than that. So it'll come. But you do have your air conditioning controls here. They are really, really nice, easy to use. You've got buttons down here to control your heated and cooled seats and also your sunshade in the back which is pretty awesome. Speaking of the leather within here is actually nicer than in other trims just because it is the sports luxury. So you get this beautiful leather seats here. Not only are they super duper comfy and look great and feel great, they are super adjustable as well. You can adjust even the leg reach down the bottom, which is pretty good for weirdly long-legged, short torsoed people like me. We're called aliens. 
Do you want to talk about it, man? No. Y yes, but after. We have official business here. Up ahead of you, you get a digital instrument cluster. No, it's not the best. You can cycle through a bunch of different menus though, and when you change between different modes, it does have cool little graphics there too. I don't really care that you don't get a full-size screen in front of you because that 12.3 inch screen is big enough. <laughs> exactly. Here under this bamboo area, you do have this little hidey hole, and then you can put your phone there, or Jacob's dream catch a water bottle. Ooh. You found it. it. Did you lose it again? Did I lose it? Please. Under here, you've got a couple of USB ports and a auxiliary in, which is interesting. And then you've also got a 12 volt socket in the glove box. Speaking of, look at this. Can open it on either side. That's very Japanese. And in there, you do get plenty of space. You've also got a wireless charger there too. So nice to see that hasn't been deleted like <coughs> BMW. Oh, by the way, one of the reasons I was so excited to get back into a Lexus. Jacob, can you guess why? I told no, you. No, I can't. You don't think. Starts with M and ends with Arc Levinson. That's right, the Mark Levinson sound system in oh. here. 17 speakers, it is on another level. How could I forget? How could you forget? You forget everything. You're worthless. No, you mean a lot to me and you're a great employee. Before I forget talking about Jacob's Dreamcatcher water bottle, I can't believe I did. Uh, here it is. Look here, you've got a cup holder and it fits Jacob's large Dreamcatcher water bottle. But then you've got a little area that you can push down. If you've got a smaller item, it just helps with that. Here you've also got, look, a nice glove box here. That's not the biggest thing in the world, but it does the job. And then door bins. Sadly, do not fit Jacob's dream catch a water bottle. Actually, they're pretty small. But that's about it, really. Like, that's, the, that's one of the only disappointing things about the interior. When you're sitting in here, not only does it feel super luxurious, it's quiet. It's so quiet. I love the bamboo. I love the bamboo. Get it in bamboo. Get it in bamboo. Let's talk about the back seats. Now, moving on to the back seats, what's it like back here? Well, it's a luxury sedan, right? So you would hope it's good back here. Boy, is it good back here. I swear you have more space than even an E-Class. Look at this, I'm 5'11", I sit notoriously far back. So much leg room, it's not funny. Look at my headroom and toe room is also pretty damn decent. So I really can't complain about that. Not only is it comfortable back here, it gets even better. But let's first talk about some other things. Look, you got some air vents back there. You've got a couple of USB-C ports. Ooh, that's fancy. And a 12 volt socket, map pocket there. The quality back here is so nice, Jacob. Look at the bamboo back here as well. You know, often car companies skimp out on the backseat passengers, not here. And the best place to see that is look at this armrest. It's like my Sangyong chairman, Jacob. Oh, that's probably why I love this car so much. But look, you got a storage area here that's felt lined, really nice. This only comes in the sports luxury, although I think you might be able to option it in lower specs. Regardless, look at this. Oh, that's right, baby. I can electronically recline the seats. How nice is that? They're also heated as well. You can control the rear sunshade again from this button here. You've also got your controls for the center screen up in front of you as well. So if you want to change music, volume, blah, 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 your passengers can do it from back here as well. I wish I was sitting back here the whole ride, honestly. Do you want me to drive you back? Y yes, please. Would you like to sit back here on y the way home? Yes, please. Okay, let's go through everybody's favorite tick-bock exercise, Jacob, which is, of course, the boot. But in all seriousness, it's really impressive. So, power tailgate, you get so much room back here. It's not funny, but you do kind of need it because you can't put down the rear seats thanks to all the electronics sitting behind them that make them so comfy. <laughs> <laughs> what the f Put the camera back on me, bro. It's good. Let's talk about specs. So, powering the behemoth. That is the ES300H, is a Toyota engine. It is a good Toyota engine though. It's a two and a half liter, four cylinder, and it pumps out a pretty healthy 160 kilowatt of power, 221 newton meters of torque. Of course, this is a hybrid, so it's also got an electric motor up at the front, and that motor generates 202 newton meters of torque, but it doesn't combine, so, you know, Lexus don't actually claim a combined figure. Whatever it is, we're gonna test the zero to 100 in just a moment anyway. Of course, it is paired to an eCVT, and it drives the front wheels. So, Jacob, shall we launch it? Let's do it. Let's bloody do it. Friend, we're about to launch the Lexus ES. Are you excited? I can't wait. I am pooing in my pants right as we speak. Shaking. Are your timbers shivered? Very shivery timbers. What do you think it's going to do zero to 100? Honestly, I have no idea. So I'm just going to throw out a random number. I'm going to say 7.2 seconds. Oh, that's actually pretty quick. I, I personally don't think it's going to do that. I reckon it's going to be 
8.6. But we'll get there in comfort and refinement. And style. And bamboo. We'll get there in bamboo. Okay, so to launch it, we're gonna put the car into sport mode, tack changes, that's pretty cool. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the CVT, the E-CVT, e in sport mode. Starts us off in fourth gear, but we don't want that. We want it in first, baby. Fist me, and fist me good. Oh. 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 Oh! oh! You're getting wow, dull. I'm getting good getting at this, man. Very dialed in. Zero to 108.69, nice, seconds. Nice. Transmission into S. Sorry, CVT transmission into S. It's still a CVT, baby, let's go! Ooh. It's a bit saucy. Do you know what? It's actually pretty impressive. Refined. Refined, that's exactly the way I would put it. And I have not once driven it like that. Not once. I've always kept it in normal and it's been it's been very normal. It's so quiet. And I've enjoyed it. You can't even call it sauce, you have to call it a jus. <laughs> yeah. There's a bike there and frankly, we're just as eco-friendly as her right now. Back into small. Oh, you can hear the CVT though. No, no, it's the CVT! Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh. That was impressive. That was nice. That was impressive. Let's be normal for a second. It does have fixed suspension. So you can get adaptive dampers, but only if you go for the F Sport, which is actually the trim below. Here in the sports luxury, you don't get that. I'm sorry, Fred, you know what this does to me. I, I do know what it does. This car's like, what is going on here? Well, it starts in fourth gear, apparently. Can you hear the hybrid kick in? Oh, yeah. Ooh. And dual power going on there. Oh. It's impressive. It is really nice. impressive. Back to the suspension, though. It is a fixed damper setup. Not that I care, because honestly, it's a lot easier. I've spoken to a lot of engineers about this. It's so much easier to get one setting right than it is to get like five. You know, you just spend all your time on one setting. It means that you can really make the perfect damper setup. We've seen a lot of cars like the JR Yaris. They, that does it really, really well. Oops, oopsie daisies. It doesn't have an Australian tune. It does not have an Australian tune. But you know what? It's so damn comfy, I couldn't care less. The other thing as well is steering. So obviously we're in sport mode now, so it makes everything feel a lot more sporty. And you can't forget that at the end of the day, this isn't a uh, sports sedan, like you'll find a lot of German rivals, but they're double the price. And also it drives totally fine for the average person. Even if it is front wheel drive, there isn't like torque steer, things like that. It's very calm, but it feels pretty quick when you really want it to be, thanks to the instant torque of that little electric motor. And honestly, as well, I'm still getting 5.5 litres per 100 kilometres. <laughs> the way you're driving, And Jeez. considering fuel at the moment is $2.50 a litre, I'm pretty happy with that. Look where we are. <sighs> Hello darkness, my old friend. You could, you could hear a pin drop. You ready, friend? I'm ready. Saucy corner. Tickle my finger, that's what the saucy corner one is. Just relaxed. Oh yeah. Very cruisy. Yeah, there isn't much body roll at all. They've done a really good job with the suspension. Ooh. It's not understeering either, even though it doesn't have a limited slip differential. It really doesn't need one. Wow. Dude. You know what I have to say, this feels like the opposite of the Alfa Romeo. I feel so safe. <laughs> so secure yeah, in so this safe. Car. So secure. <laughs> And you just feel comfy, right? And I've never driven in sport mode. That's the first time I've been driving in a normal. And I've just been sitting like this, right? Nice heated seats, heated steering wheel, beautiful interior. It's nice and quiet. You just don't, I, I don't know what other car for like this money you can get that feels like this, apart from another Lexus. Yeah. And man, honestly, that's why it's just been so damn successful here in Australia. I don't know any other like mid-sized luxury sedan that's actually gone up 
in sales. Mm. This thing has been doing so well. Obviously, there's the people who are buying it just because they want any sort of car they can get their hands on. Well, it's a silver top taxi. Yeah, it really is at the end of the day, isn't it? But it's so nice. It's just so nice. Even the base model feels really nice. This is just like over the top with absolutely every everything and the Mark Levinson South System and the bamboo and the nicer leather. But it doesn't matter what grade you go for, you're getting a really, really nice car. No, it doesn't drive the best. But if you're buying a, a, a Lexus with a hybrid engine, you're, you're there for the fuel economy and the quietness and the refinement and the fact that it will start up for years to come. And with that, let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, so what makes the Lexus ES so successful, especially in a dying segment? Well, it's just the entire package at a good price. You get a nice exterior, it looks premium, go inside, it feels super luxurious. It's not the most invigorating ride out there, but it does drive super duper well, while also being frugal on petrol, thanks to the tried and true hybrid system. You've then got reliability, and all of that at a really good price. It's an absolute win, and that's why it's been so successful. And honestly, like, when I see someone driving this, I think, you know, they've made the active choice not to go for a German brand, and I really, really respect that. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section, just below that like button. Would you buy a Lexus? Have you got a Lexus, Jacob? Do you like me? I, yeah, you're all right. Dude, the camera just died. The ca did it actually? Yes, it's Oh dead. my gosh. Okay, well, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, click on somewhere. The screen's black now, but that's all right. Are you gonna put a picture here at least? I'll like... put your face right now. All right, perfect. Thank you guys. All See right. you next week. See ya.